Welcome back to Weekends with Anna Kasparian and Michael Brooks. Joining us now is Michael Moore, who has a new documentary out, uh, Planet of the Humans. Michael, thank you for joining us. For having me on, I really appreciate it. Thanks for all of you do there too. It means a lot. Thank you, thank you. So um, I was listening to uh, your latest podcast episode where you uh, interviewed Bernie Sanders, and there was an exchange during that interview that really, really caught my attention. I want to just quickly play it for the audience and then sure. um, discuss it because I think it can really start uh, a conversation about where we go from here. Take a look. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> what we should not minimize, Michael, and what is enormous, and I want all of our supporters to understand that we have won the ideological battle. Yes. The American people agree with virtually our entire agenda yes. that the political system That's is correct. corrupt, that massive income and wealth inequality is disgraceful, that health care is a human right, that we've got to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, got to deal with climate change, we've got to make public colleges and universities tuition free, immigration reform, criminal justice reform, women's rights, we gun rights. We have won. You know, the, the, yes. The public is behind all of that. They want and they want Correct. the rich to be taxed properly. Exactly. But what the system and the establishment were able to say is that you know uh, Bernie can't beat Trump, uh, which is also, I believe, untrue. So I like that portion of the conversation because it, it it's helping me to kind of think of what what the reality is, right? So I think that there are two conflicting thoughts right now. Um, there is this idea that the Bernie campaign has actually accomplished quite a bit in, in terms of pushing some of these progressive ideas um, to a place where we're at least discussing them. At the same time though, I think a lot of people on the left feel a little hopeless or helpless. I know that's not a healthy place to be and we need to keep fighting. But when you list all of those things that are working against us, right? So the corporate media, for instance, the um, establishment Democratic Party, and how they will do anything to uh, destroy the candidacy of a progressive like Bernie Sanders. How do we say that we've won anything? Because it feels like we have almost no power. Uh, the Biden campaign, for instance, is listing Larry Summers as one of their economic advisors, which feels like a slap in the face for progressive voters. So, you know, how do we kind of like handle where we are right now and, and push this momentum to a place where we actually accomplish the progressive policies we need? I know a lot of people are, uh, feel a sense of despair uh, right now. I completely get that. Um, but what Bernie was saying, and I agree with it, is that now is not the time to to feel this despair because of what we've accomplished. And what I said to him there in the in the podcast, it's like he's sort of like um, you know Moses led everybody through the desert for how many years or whatever, um, and was not allowed to go into the promised land. Okay, so the candidate um, uh, isn't going to be the candidate. But he's made this clear from the beginning that this is about something far greater than one individual that, you know, we're, I don't think any of us are really part of any kind of cult of personality here when it comes to somebody like Bernie. Um, he was acting as our stand in, as uh, as our person to take these things forward. He did that. He convinced the majority of the American people between these two campaigns in 2016 and the one uh, this year. Uh, look at how people have changed and look at how they've changed now during this pandemic uh, where there's an open discussion taking place. I saw Nancy Pelosi last night talking about a, a guaranteed annual income. Um, these are things that never could have been floated before had they not been uh, taken for a test drive by Bernie Sanders and all the people that were part of the campaign. But I don't know, I never, on some level, yes, we were all part of the campaign, but I've always figured that we were doing this because we were part of a movement and it's the movement that will succeed. It's already succeeding. You know, you look back to the early days of the civil rights movement, uh, the, the feminist movement, uh, gay rights movement, 
what percentage of the American people were in favor of equal rights uh, for uh, gay and lesbian people? What percentage of the population um, back in the 50s thought Martin Luther King was just the greatest? Um, or were happy to see women from Gloria Steinem to Bella Abzug to all the great uh, leaders of the women's movement in the late 60s and early 70s. You know, they didn't get there and they didn't accomplish what they accomplished easily. And if you, if you, I'm sure there were polls at the time that showed the majority of Americans did not like Martin Luther King and did not like the feminists and um, really didn't like gay people. So that, those movements took a long time till finally, you know, a slight majority of the American people were behind women's rights, were behind civil rights, were behind gay rights. Um, that was hard work trying to convince people to change their minds. We don't have to do that work. We do not have to convince the average American that $7.25 an hour is bullshit. We don't have to convince the American public that um, arresting somebody for possessing marijuana and throwing them in jail for 20 years is wrong. We don't have to convince the American public anymore, especially now in this pandemic, uh, that we have a broken health care system and that, and that we don't treat health and health care as a human right. Everybody's with us. I want to say everybody. I mean, the majority are with us. Look at any poll. It doesn't matter. Even the exit polls at the Mississippi primary showed that the majority of people were, were in favor of Medicare for all. And they even tried to gin up the question when they asked the people coming out of voting in Mississippi and Alabama. They didn't call it Medicare for all. They, they said, would you be willing to give up your private uh, health insurance for a government run program? And the, and yes, the, the majority said yes. Yes. That's, we have, we have really gone, we've come very far here. And so I'm a very, I'm optimistic about that. Uh, we don't have the candidate that we needed to take this thing through. But we can put a lot of good, healthy pressure on Joe Biden. And we can flip this, the Senate. If he wins, we only need to, uh, flip three seats. We should be able uh, to do that. We we cannot give up. We cannot wallow in our uh, despair about any of this. It, it's, I mean, this is what I admire about the other side of the political fence. They never give up. They never sit around. They go at it like you could show them all the proof in the world that the earth is not 6,000 years old, that Adam and Eve did not ride on dinosaurs. It wouldn't matter. They are relentless. They are unforgiving. They are, they are, they are so attached in, in, into the strength of their beliefs. And, um, and I'm not saying that we should be that way in the sense that we're not open to new ideas or whatever, but man, I, you got to hand it to them. They, um, they will not give up. They are relentless. And when we start behaving that way, and we have the right to behave that way, they don't, because the majority of Americans don't agree with them. 